Hey everyone, Wanderbot here, and welcome to Four Tales, a, uh, a really lovely hand-painted deck builder, narrative deck builder? I think they were originally considering making it a roguelike, but I'm not actually sure if it is. But it's made by Alchemy, who are uh, the studio that made Drifting Lands, a game from five years ago, or, or longer? I remember really enjoying Drifting Lands when I uh, when I played it, but it kind of like fell off the radar, and apparently there were some issues with like a publisher uh, possibly kind of sabotaging the project, which was a bit of a shame. But uh, I guess they soldiered on and have made this, and it looks incredible. I've been following the development more or less ever since I looked them up to try and figure out like, hey, what happened to Alchemy? And I just saw images of this, and I was like, holy shit, this looks amazing. So this is not the actual full version. This is a demo. I've just downloaded it off Steam. You guys can too. Tried yourselves uh, before, I guess, the Steam Next Fest next week, uh, which is kind of next week, or is it at the end of this week? It's the end of this week. Anyway, Mysterious Patron. Volpane needs money to help his father and the local miners. His friend Leo says there's someone in town with a very lucrative job offer. He looks kind of sketchy. Welcome to Four Tales, an adventure game where you progress by completing car uh, combining cards and exploring decks. Ooh. This is it, Volpane. Our ticket to the easy life. One last job in our days of stealing apples from the market behind us. So, that's, w uh, that's what you said the last time. So, who's this contract of yours? His name's Timothy. He says he has work for, uh, for people like us. I'm not sure he can pay, because I can't really do with the money right now. Don't worry, he's promised a hefty reward. It should be more than enough to help your father and the miners uh, with their strike, and for me to take an early retirement. It's just a little difficult to track down in town sometimes. We'd better ask around, then. He looks like a good place to start. The typical region in the game is composed of three locations. Cards placed on the board. You can learn more about... Uh, you learn more by hovering over them. Sometimes clicking on them will trigger some dialogue or a reaction from your characters. Try it out for yourself. Click on the left card with the beggar. He will remind you of what he wants. Good day to you, young bird. How can I be of assistance? Well, you are looking for someone by the name of Timothy. Ah, I see, I see. A very secretive fellow is he. I think I heard something about him the other day, but my sadly, my memory isn't what it once was. Right. What might I... what might jog your memory, I wonder? A bite to eat usually does the trick. About five food should be sufficient. Five food? That's enough to last a few days. Ignore my friend here. We'll come back with some food for you. Unfortunately, these two voices are a little similar, but is what it is. Marketplace. Sights, sounds, and smells of city life intermingle in this bustling hub of commerce. A great place to trade goods. And... Apple Merchant. Don't be fooled by his jolly banter. He's as much of a gossip as he is a merchant. Okay. Oh, so we can actually do... Uh, we can actually do cards here. Years in the wilderness have made Leo an outstanding tracker with a flair for sniffing out food and places of interest. Aimed shots. So we could actually just kill the apple guy. If I wanted to. The poor, the weak, and the needy must stick together to survive. Volpane can inspire compassion to attract potential allies. Interesting. Eavesdrop. You can learn a lot when you... Take the time to stop and listen. And nimble hands. Alright, so we have some money. So, we can spend the money to get some food. We have some food. We have some fame. So we can lose fame to get food. Interesting, it looks like... I also lose fame by... Trying to buy the food. And I can also do Grim. Oh. Theft murder, uh, theft, murder, violence, and general lawlessness. A reputation like that guarantees respect amongst outlaw, outlaws and makes law-abiding citizens quake in their boots. So, eavesdropping might cost me some money, or maybe I gain some. Let's try eavesdropping on this guy. Receive nasty little secret. Move to the next location. Sniff it out. Move to the next location. Move to Noisy Tavern. Gain food, gain gold. Add a creature to the graveyard. Fight against two more creatures. Okay. Gain food, move to the next location. Move to block kids. And gain food, move to the next location. Add one creature to the search party. Consume two gold. Okay, just two gold. Not fame. Gain food, gold, gain food, move to the next location. Uh, he needs two, f uh, two food for gold, and he needs five for story effect. What about this? Consume one fame, gain food. Two Grim also gains me some food. Interesting. 
Okay, let's start with the eavesdropping, because that's interesting. Now, how's that for a juicy piece of gossip? Okay. One very important thing rule to remember, you can only play one card per location card on the board. Sometimes it'll transform the target card into another, but most of the time it'll just consume it and travel to the next card. A standard used card at the bottom of the board will go back to the bottom of the exploration deck. Once a slot is available, it will automatically be filled with the top card from the exploration deck. You can't run out of location cards to explore because the exploration deck always cycles. Hey, so we can go back. If we want to. Poor district. Population here are in dire need of help, but can also offer assistance if, assistance if they're asked nicely enough. Solidarity of the weak. Would move me to the blockades for both. Obviously I could do that, but that would get me in trouble. That would get me in trouble. On the scent is interesting, but it looks like it would just cycle it. Or move, moves us to the noisy tavern. So I could throw some gold, gain some fame, which is not the worst. Um, Because I believe I could actually trade some fame for food previously. What about these? Can't do anything with it. So I'll hold on to that. So two food gets me four fame. I'm going to try throwing some gold at that, gain some fame. Very generous of you. We'll see what happens. There's a narrator. That's interesting. Oh, and we might have a fight. But where? To them up, but they look mad. A hostile token is blocking this card. You won't be able to play any card on this suspicious street until you've gotten rid of the bandits. Click on the token. You can see the creatures forming the group and decide whether or not to engage. Most confrontations start with the negotiation phase. If you have the corresponding resources, you might discard this threat without any violence. But you don't absolutely need to play here. You may as well try and avoid any conflict and play on the other cards available. Okay, so Bandit Token, group of aggressive outlaws. In order to play the card they keep, you have to get rid of them. Violence is not the only solution. Okay, so it's three of these guys. Um, so here's the other question, and I can't just drop this on here. So this one, Suspicious Street, a gold coin lies conspicuously in the pavement of the shady looking street. Trap is obvious, but what do they say? Sick Parvis Magna. All right, I'm gonna try and go to the noisy tavern first. Leo, oh, I'm hungry. Okay, we now have a rallying cry. So I can do a rallying cry and get some more fame. Uh, let's see, aim shot on this just moves. Get me food, but add something to the search party. Gets me into the usual suspects. Gets me food, yeah, it gets me in trouble. Can't do anything with that. Can't do anything with food. I could spend, uh, I mean, it's an okay amount. I'm gonna try the rallying cry. Let's farm fame. Anything for free is the real answer, though I lose the card. Leo's mighty roar drew a crowd of curious townsfolk. Let's see, what can we do? That would be hella bad. Solidarity of the weak would get me a gold. That would get me worse. Uh, I could throw food for even more fame. I'm gonna try it. We're gonna upcycle everything. Share and share alike. I'm just gonna get hella famous and we'll see what happens. Alright, narrative deck goes back. It's kind of? This is new. Old well, good place to refresh yourself. Or make a quick wish. So I can nimble hands for some money. And gold. It's all day of the week. Gets me food and brings me to the block kids. Uh, aim shot doesn't do much, and survivor's sense gets me food and gold. Well, I have two pickpockets. Let's let's go for the food and gold. This looks like a good spot to refill our canteens. Ooh, shiny. I'm just gonna cycle this until we have to fight. Well, I don't know what you did to wind them up, but they look mad. Okay, so we've got two groups. I think they're about the same, so we're gonna engage. We see if we can come to an arrangement. Okay, play any number of non-aggressive cards to start the fight or start the fight with a combat card or the auto attack auto battle token. Rolling over cards at your disposal, discover ways to get rid of them. Get rid of enough opponents, bring the morale of the group to zero, and the rest will flee. Use an aggressive card, the confrontation will automatically turn into a fight. We don't have 
if you don't have any cards to play or don't want to play any cards, you can do auto token and trigger the fight manually. So if I start with this, I can potentially kill one of these guys first, which would save me some harm. Uh, it doesn't look like it can do anything with that. I can get them to leave if I give them some money. Same thing with fame, but it's a lot. Or I can use a grim or hurts group morale. Okay, so what is this? Morale token. Ah, when one of them leaves the battle or dies, it's subtracted. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna toss one gold at this guy. And no one had to get stitches. He leaves. Bravo. And then I'm just gonna kill this dude. Oh, ouch. Because killing him gets us a grim. Brought the enemy morale to zero. All remaining hostiles will now flee for their lives. Whenever you trigger panic, each fleeing enemy will grant you one fame, whatever their level. Time. Okay. So I don't quite know what's in this one. However, we now have suspicious... Uh, suspicious things. So I can get... What does this get me? Oh, add something to the search party. Maybe not. Let's try Survivor Sense, because that gets me a gold and a food. Oh, those are quite delicious. With this is really honey. cool. No? Yeah, you're right. We don't have time. Alright, we're back here again, I think. So we have another marketplace. So... Question. Oh, I can't throw fame at it, but I can throw some gold at it and get enough food. Both bits of gold? Tempting. Let's do it. Uh, or do we go here and try and knock these guys off too for a little bit more? Maybe. Because they don't look too bad. Because I know I can get rid of this guy. This guy does have 4 HP. I guess I could maybe pay some fame. We could just take some damage for once and see what happens. Uh, I'm sure we can heal accordingly. Otherwise, we just keep trying to see what I can do. Okay, so we can go back to the noisy tavern, but we don't have that. That's a bad move. Let's move to the blockheads. What do you want, mister? Okay, so we have eavesdrop. Uh, aim shot, which would be horrifying. Move to the next location. I can also give them some food, get some fame, and a street urchin. Same general deal. So, one fame and a street urchin for both. What about this? One fame just gets me the street urchin. Try the coin. Wow, oh, thanks. Anything well, I can do for you? Very altruistic. Okay, so we have a street urchin. Oh, interesting. Little Pip Squeak knows how to attract attention, is pretty good at hurling rocks in a fight. Interesting. Okay, noisy tavern again. So, move to the next location. Doesn't really help too much, but eavesdrop? Moves to the bladesmith's hideout. That sounds interesting. Ah, huh, now that's interesting. Sounds like there's a private room under the tavern. At least one of your adventurers ha has only a few skill cards left in their deck. Maybe you can use the rest deck to recover some. Since rest cards will give all skill cards back to all adventurers, it's a good idea to use actions from all of your adventures, not just one. You spend the effort between them, you won't have to rest as often. Oh, I see. He's got three and five. So, what do we have? On the scent? No. We could pickpocket, but that's a terrible idea. Aim shot seems like a his poor idea. And while that would give me money, I don't know what the search party is. It's unfortunately, I don't think I can do anything else there for the moment. So let's engage these guys in combat and see what I can do. Um, no one needs to die here. Okay. So interaction effects pickpocket. I like that. So. Got some morale. Oh, interesting. On the scent, boost attack point for the next round. That'll just do some damage. And I can't pickpocket him again, so I kind of wasted the urchin there. 
So. Six fame, though. That part's rough. Okay. So I think I'm going to start by shooting this guy. Oh, ouch. Get rid of him. <laughs> and then we have three Grim. Oh, both sides will automatically attack the opponent. Oh. Okay, so I can still play cards, but this hurts. So I should have left the bow for later. Call the Undertaker. We've got a fresh one. Don't well, good to know. Your chances, eh? Okay, so we now have this area. We've taken a little bit of damage, but not much. Suspicious Street. So, I can gain gold and food, or just gold. And that would give me the gold. I'm trying not to rob the street, to be honest. I like the interactions here. Okay, let's do... On the scent brings us into Noisy Tavern. That just brings us elsewhere. I don't really feel like going back to the tavern, to be honest. I can trade this skill. Wait, can I do that to him? Oh. No, we don't want to do that. Okay. Grab some more money. Something some more of this. I was hoping going. we'd find that uh, fruit vendor again. There he is. This is what I was looking for. So we have a rallying cry here. Move to the usual suspects and get me a fame. I'm just trying to farm this and see what I've got. What? Well, at least you have their attention. We've got this. So I can do another one of these. Ah, I can get a lockpick and a those. I could get a thug, a snitch, or another snitch. I'm going to use the pickpocket here. I'm going to rob them. Because now we have these, whatever they're useful for. What is this? Peppery diversion. Hmm. Okay, throwing knife and lockpick. Interesting. Well, here's the answer. I can get the food. Always happy to give a free sample to the local celebrities. You're that Volpane celebrities. An army marches on its stomach. The same goes for a band of thieves and weirdos. Let's see what this guy knows. Lead the way. Okay, so we have more of this, but we'll leave that for later. Search party call? Oh, yeah, but we don't have any in the search party, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, so, now that I've got five food, consume five food story effects. Oh, thank you, young bird. Now about this Timothy chap. But of course, where my manners. Yeah, follow this path. That should show the way. Well, how very altruistic. Thanks for the tip, bud. A good day to you, bird. Well, what now? I suppose we should follow the old beggar's directions on that piece of paper. Sometimes you'll have to seek the directions to progress in the story and reach new destinations. Check the description in your cards. All right. Ooh. Oh, it's the well again. So, I'll grab what I can. The old beggars mark the path, uh, find the nearest marketplace and follow the directions from there. Well, that's easy enough. However, uh, let's see. So I could gain some food and fame and small, small crowd. Or food and gold. Let's pickpocket. I'm not using the pickpocket much, just because the uh, threat of a search party is kind of annoying. And I also just tend not to go for that. Okay, we've got another fight there. Lovely. I do have some tools I could dump on it, but let's not. Uh, let's see. Let's just well, toss money, gain fame. Altruistic. Anytime I can upcycle one of my resources for two more, almost always is worth it. Well, I hope you're going to wash that before you eat it. Okay, we have another fight. Really do make a lot Let's try going here. A heavily bandaged figure stood alone in the alleyway. It looked like he was waiting for someone. As Volpane and Leo approached, the figure turned to greet them. Ah, uh, Leo, so you're finally here. And you brought a crow. I'm a shoe bill. But of course you are. We heard you have work? Do I ever. But before we get down to brass tacks, 
I always like to get an understanding of who it is I'm working with. What do you mean? I'd like a demonstration of the value you'll bring to this operation. Demonstration? Yes, you know. Skills, my boys. Show me your skills. The pair looked at each other, perplexed. What did he mean, skills? Skills in combat? Sleight of hand. I mean, there's a good old trick shot from Leo. By scanning through the cards in your hand, you'll be able to determine which ones can be played in the situation. Yeah, so I've kind of already figured a lot of these out. So I could toss Grim at him. He doesn't care about fame, interestingly enough. But he did take this. So I could do nimble, nimble hands, or I could do Grim. I don't know what the difference is, but I'm going to do nimble hands. If I were to steal your purse from right under your nose. That would be impressive, especially as you've just warned me you're about to. Hold on a minute. With a wry smile, Volpain produced a finely embroidered purse full of gold. The masked figure was taken aback. Very impressive indeed. Here you go. All present and correct. I'll tell you what. Keep it. Consider that your first payment. Oh, thank you very much. Now then, perhaps you'd like to tell us what you needed. I would like for the two of you to acquire an item for me. An instrument, in fact. A very rare and beautiful liar that's currently in the possession of the uh, esteemed Lady Cattell. You mean the old bat that lives on the hill? I wouldn't call her that to her face, but yes, that's her. I'd like you to break into her manor, steal the liar, and bring it to me at Holy Grove. The Holy Grove? I know the place well. I'll get you there myself, Vaultpain. Excellent. Then I shall leave you to it. I look forward to our next meeting. Alright, we've got a job to do. At long last. We can get straight to it if you think we're ready to go. Or we can spend more time on the streets to prepare. It's your call. You only have a limited number of skill cards in your adventurer's deck. Spending too many will tire them out. If you want to recover some skill cards, you'll have to use the use rest cards on the right side of the board. Each rest card has its own set of effects and sometimes a price that you can decide to pay or not. Read carefully what they do. Click on the rest deck and try to use the first rest card. Okay. Un uneventful stop. Recover up to three cards per adventurer. Sure. Feeling better already. You've recovered some skill cards and suffered no other consequences. Don't expect it to be so easy very often. The next card in the deck will cost you food or health points. And the last card of the rest deck is always a game over, so be sure to check out how many times you can hope you can hope to rest in a region. Once you move on to the next region, the rest deck will be replaced with a new set of cards. And the number of rest cards in the next region is independent of how many uh, how many you've used here. You've completed this region. You can either click continue, or you might want to spend some more time to gather resources and allies. Sure. Okay, so we have a noisy tavern. We can call people over, get me some more fame. Or we can... Do a tavern brawl. But that's search party. Alright, let's see what I can get. So I get... Holy shit, that'd be dark. Uh, let's see. So... I can just call it, consume Grim to get a bunch of rioters. Can't do any fame. Could do food for fame, which is always pretty good. Or two gold for four. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, Solitary of the Week would get me one one gold, but I'd rather not do that. Let's get more fame. Heartwarming stuff. I can't spend it particularly well, but it's still use it useful. Because, for example, one fame for two food. Yeah, that's a good conversion ratio. I could also just threaten him, but... Yeah, I'm just going to try and cycle some resources here, at least for a little while. Uh, let's see. So I could throw gold in. One gold for one food and one fame. Sure. I don't know how long I want to hang out here. Probably, well, in retrospect, maybe it's fine. Very kind, I must say. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep grabbing some food because I can rest and get more. Let's see, another marketplace. 
But yeah, I could sell two food for some gold, which, I mean, like, cycling, it's not great, but I can turn, uh, two gold pieces into more gold. Uh, or two gold pieces into two food, which I can then get more, uh, one gold piece for some of those. Oh, I can also pay food for skill cards. There's a lot of things that I could do here. Um... How much food do I want? The only media problem is I can't currently use my fame for anything, so I'm really just cycling one resource for the other. Wash that before you eat it. Lockpick would give me a bunch of food. Interesting. Uh, let's see. And yeah, these would get me to the usual suspects, but I currently don't have the ability to rob them. Uh, or we can fight a bandit token for a bit. Uh, it's let's engage. I've got some. I got some tricks. I'm sure they could be. Oh, in retrospect, we might actually want to do price. the usual suspects. So if I do this, send front creatures with max level, level one, to search parties. So this would stun the other two creatures for a round, and it would put him in the search party. Let's do that, actually. Because he'll attack me later, but that's fine. Oh. That was considered a, a combat card. So I could pickpocket this guy. Okay, and that did not that was not considered an attack. So I could shoot him. What else do we have? I do have the throwing knife, does some damage. Uh, I could throw fame to get one of them to go away, but he's about to die. I don't know. Uh, let's just shoot this guy. Oh, ouch. And then he runs away. Cowards. So nothing major. Okay, so we have Survivor Sense, so I can get some more food. What is this one? Suspicious Street. But yeah, I can't do anything particularly good there. So we can move to the Noisy Tavern. We can move to the next location. Try the Bladesmith again. Uh, let's see, because the usual suspects is, are not the worst. Let's go to the usual suspects. Okay, so I can pay gold to get a thug. Get a snitch, get a snitch. Get more lockpicks. Get a nasty little secret. Discard two random creatures from Bandit Faction and with max level 5. That's interesting. Let's pay one, f one fame for a thug. Or not a thug, a snitch. I don't know what the snitch is useful for. So discord amongst en enemy ranks. Interesting. So, what do we do? I mean, honestly, one fame for two food. I'm gonna have a lot of food as a result of this. For better and worse. Let's get the money. We might want to just try and rack up some things. Though I should stop and maybe rest a couple of times. I don't know what you did to wind them up, but they look mad. Okay, and then there's just this guy who I can engage. He's easy. Be smart, and you might walk away from this richer. Boop. Oh, and my decks are getting ouch. empty, so I should probably stop to uh to rest some. But even killing those guys gets me some grim. Let's see. I'd rather save the lockpicks. Let's see. Two food for four fame. Very kind of you, I must I'd say. I'd swear I sold food for a bunch at some point earlier. But I guess I didn't. It's fine. Okay, so what do we do? Because if I go here, we can go to the Bladesmith's hideout again. I have a lot more resources. So I might be able to do something interesting. 
So that brings us back to the Noisy Tavern. Black Market. We can also get... Oh! Healing Balm, Healing Plants. Ah, uh, that's actually kind of tempting. The Black Market is temp tempting as well, but let's go for this. Clearly, they should lock it tighter next time. All right, and that's a bunch of resources. And a pair of markets. Well, let's rest. Two foods to recover? Sure, spend and rest. I wonder if we automatically rest between zones. Now, I'm pretty sure this last one is give up. But we're not doing that. Okay, so at this point, let's spend no more cards, gather what materials we can. I'm going to spend one gold for two food. Two food for two gold. Okay, we've got another fight there. Fame for food. I'm just going to stack up on resources and then we're going to bail. I don't know if it resets my deck, but it seems like it's worth it. There we go. Yeah, so don't use skills, use resources, because resources can be kind of upscaled here. It's probably overkill, but I I know I know for a fact when we get to this point, uh, like when this game fully comes out, I will probably spend a decent amount of time being maximum trade man. Because it pays. I have no idea what having 21 fame is going to net me. awful nice of you. But it seems like it's worth it. Uh, let's see. So, two money for four food. Can't do anything else. So, I could go back to the bladesmith's hideout. The only immediate problem is... Well, the other thing I can do is this. Get a tavern brawl, two grim, and trigger the search party. But if we leave, maybe no search party. Let me go to the bladesmith's hideout again. Because I might be able to get to the black market. And I want to know that. That's the usual suspects again. Ah. Uh, looks like no dice. I was really hoping the bladesmith's hideout would give me some, uh, something better. Well, let's do Solidarity of the Week. We'll do one more of these. Problem is he's running out of resources. So that one money gets me a thug. Yeah, I'll pick up a thug, and then let's let's go. Volpad made them an offer they couldn't refuse. Unless there's something I absolutely have to pick up here. I was hoping for another pig merchant, but alas. Okay, uh, let's just continue. Let's see what happens. Leo's brought Volpane to the city gardens, where food is plentiful and secrets lurk around every corner. Deep in the labyrinth lies our hero's destination for the evening, Lady Cattell's Manor. Now, do I get my my cards back, or am I at a loss? Watch out, guards! Okay, so we have a search party now. There are now several hostile uh, creatures in the search party. A deck of cards representing animals chasing your party of adventurers. Every time a new location card appears on the board, if it has a search party call token with an I, it means it may spawn a group of enemies coming from there. Some of your actions may also add hostiles to the search party. Alright, so we have some of these. Right then, Timothy said... The instrument is inside Lady Cattell's manor. The big house with the labyrinth. That's the one. But getting through that hedge maze is going to be tough. I think I saw some gardeners wandering around earlier. Maybe they know the way. Hmm. Seems you've attracted some heat, Volpan. Okay, so first and foremost, I want to take a look at this. There aren't many of them. So potentially clearing out the search party gives me access to a whole lot. These guys are weak. Uh, so we want to engage them. Honestly, they're kind of cute, and I feel a bit bad for them. So, first and foremost, I got some fame. Fame, grim, and then I can do a big murder. I can also snitch them, but it seems kind of wasteful. Excuse me, I hoarded a bunch of fame for a reason here. I could do a peppery diversion. I could murk the dude. 
Uh, let's see. So gold, food, or more fame. I'm just going to hero my way through this. Out there from time to time. I'm so famous I can just waltz right in. Gardener. He knows these gardens like the back of his hand. And if you're polite, he'll even show you where the best apples are. So we can give him some food to get a gardener. We can give him some fame to get a gardener. What else have we got? Move to the next location. Gardener. If I want to do Solidarity of the Week, that's just terrible. Okay, so I think the answer is fame. A little help. Sure thing! All we need to do is lead the gardener to the labyrinth, and the rest should be easy. Let's see about that. Have a look around there. Might be something worth looting. Look, I can see some documents through the glass. Think they'll be useful? Only one way to find out. Maybe that gardener could open the door for us. Okay, so we've got a couple of things. Locked gate greenhouse. Heavy chain blocks the way to the greenhouse. Breaking the glass would attract too much attention. There has to be a quiet way in. So what do we have? None of my resources can. So this will get me healing plants. Tempting. These will just move me to the next location. This gets me another gardener. Oh, move to gardener. If I want to get another one. I think they're a little tempting. I can also do nimble hands there. However, survivor sense gets me even more. On the scent. Moves me to the locked gatehouse. Ooh, have that. I'm going to go for the three food. So there's a reason why. marches on its stomach. The same goes for hey. a band of thieves and weirdos. Okay. Orchard. Fruit is the cornerstone of the average citizen's diet. Only nobles or skilled hunters can claim to eat that much, uh, eat the much rarer and much tastier insect meat. Okay. So, food and fame. Locked greenhouse. Solidarity, solidarity for the week. Those, anything else. Be used here. I could use the gardener, but I'd rather just grab some other things. The fame has not been the worst. Oh, I can also just shoot this. Kill one creature from three randomly selected in the search party. That's actually really tempting. I don't think I'm going to, though. I think it's better to do it in the middle of a battle. So let's just steal some food. Thorny bushes. Gives me some options. I'm gonna throw some food at him. Oh, that gets him that. It doesn't actually make him rest. So he's running out of cards in a bad way. One damage to the party, move back to the orchard. Or we have the gardener. Or we could, you know, just not go back there. So food heals us. Okay, patrolled garden. Second gardener is not the worst in the world. We also have the vegetable labyrinth. So story effects, and that would move us to the winter garden. Tempting. This looks like a map of the labyrinth. But look, it's only the inner part of the maze. Yeah, why can't anything be simple? Better than nothing, I'm sure we can find something to show us the way to the middle. Or someone. Okay, so that's actually really helpful. And maybe we can do some stuff here. So that once again gets us to the gardener kind of on both of them and none none of these are useful except for the sword or no the thug this will cause one of them to flee frankly solidarity of the week Let's get the gardener out toss some fame at him get another gardener okay we have a fight there's two of them pretty easy uh, do we do it? Sure. Because once again, I have all, all of this fame for a very specific reason. Boop. It's good to get one's name out there from time to time. And we're just going to shoot this guy. I feel kind of bad for shooting the guards, but... I don't think there's really morality beyond the grim tokens. Okay, so patrolled garden. So that gets us back to the orchard. Orchard, 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 and can't do anything else with these. Well, we have an appointment with the lady of the house. Would you show us uh, the way through the maze? 
I've trimmed these hedges many times. Follow me. That's quite a statue. What? What is it? I'm sorry, sirs. I'd rather not go any further. What? You're serious? We're barely halfway. It's the statue, sirs. Bad luck it is. Haunted. The gardener looks uh, backed away from the statue nervously, leaving Volpin and Leo alone. I had to admit, it was a rather foreboding sight. Great. Shh. Hey, the guy here, the guard patrol coming. Quick, hide. Well, if the guards wanted a fight, they were going to get one. The patrol took up position right in front of the statue. Patrols we can deal with, but how are we going to find our way through the rest of the labyrinth? We found that map, remember? That should help us uh, figure out the best route. Of course, let's take a look once we've dealt with the watch. Okay, so let's take a look. That's some chunkers. Okay, and I have nothing that interacts with these. How many of these are left? Oh. Yeah, okay. It's good that I didn't uh, waste the thug of the shot on this, because I'm going to need them for the fights. There's not much I can do, so we're going to engage. Once again, I have a goofy amount of fame that I can use here. They're overworked and underpaid. Maybe there's a deal to be struck. Okay, so let's do a peppery diversion. <laughs> Yeet one of them. How are you going to get out of this one, Volpa? Oh. Okay, two action cards and launch the assault. Yeah, of course that would. So Snitch will hit morale. What else do we have? Because it could also just fame one of them away. This guy do, does two damage, so let's just get rid of him. Oh, yep, that's the sound of Volpan's name dropping. Oh. And then they just leave. Rad, that's even better than I thought. What are we waiting for? Let's go. All right, and we've got the map for this reason. I'm reading this right. We should be there in no time. Good thing, too. It's almost night time. Perfect timing. The darker, the better. That's Lady Cattell's manner. Finally. Hey, maybe that was the hard part, and it's all downhill from here. Wishful thinking. It's getting dark. Time to get down to business. Hold on a second. This could be our last chance to rest up. Need my nimble hands at the ready. Sometimes your adventurers won't have their best skill cards on hand, but don't worry. Anytime you're not in combat, you can trade a skill card from your hand for another one. Just drag the card above the owner's deck and choose the new card. If the card is unavailable from your draw pile, you'll have to pay a fixed price of one per card. A little expensive, especially considering you could have rested to regain several cards at once. But the cost of resting can also be pretty high, so be careful not to burn through too many skill cards by trading them. Alright. Mo, well, we might as well just rest. We'll have more in the search party, but that's fine. Ooh. That's a bunch, but it'll be okay. Let's see. Spend and rest. I wonder if we can have a party of up to three, it looks like. It's not like it's the end of the world or anything. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna make do, I think. I mean, I could try a couple of things. Here, let's let's just get rid of some cards from this guy. Get a, get a gardener. I just want to blow some of his cards. If I can. Oop, I don't want to do Grim. I want to do Fame. Get another gardener. I don't know what they're exactly useful for. I guess they're useful for a couple of things. Oh, we get a second. Sure, why not? Once again, I can use fame uh, to get out of fights, but these gardeners are kind of handy at the moment. Okay, so I could gain four food. Oh, it won't give me more. Uh, let's see. Go back to the orchard. Or just four food. I mean, that's an upscale there. We'll see what happens. Oh, that's handy. Damn small town cops. But we do have the cops. 
But that takes me to the orchard. Let's see if I can get more. Gets me a shot. We do have uh, three guards. And couple. I'm going to engage these guys. Perhaps you can grease the wheels of justice here, Volpat. Okay, if I toss the thug. Oh, thug won't hit him. Consume Grim. Corrupt. That's... You know... I'm going to corrupt the rookie. They must have heard of you, Volpan. That's hilarious. Okay. And, I mean, easy That's enough. Right. It's we get the fame back. Volpan. I appreciate these combat mechanics. They're kind of fun. Okay, so we can nimble hand some more food. Or... We can grab that. I just want to rest before we go to the next area. Hmm. Let's see if there's anything I new. Some good loot nearby. Okay, so this will get us healing plants. And this will get us to the winter garden, but I'm not really sure what that is good for. One damage, but it gets me two healing plants. Okay, that's a little bit more useful. Because I think the healing plants are worth more. And we do have a fight here. Okay, so this would heal for two. So that was very much worth it. And we also have another fight. Sure. Kind of, I kind of want to clear this out, ah, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. So once again, easiest option still feels like. Let's do that. And then I can just shoot him. We don't get any fame for this though. That was a cost, but it's fine. We get a grim. Grim card for it, I guess. Okay. Now's a good time. Rest one more. I guess clearing out the uh, guard deck isn't really that helpful. Or patrol deck. If they keep getting uh, restocked like this. Alright. Sounds like a job that will require my nibble hands. Oh, I see. So nibble hands gets us further. Alright, let's do this. Do what you do best. I'll cover the exit. Under the cover of night, Volpin, uh, Volpon, Ghost, oh, Lupon. It's a Lupon reference, of course. Under the cover of night, Volpon ghosted into the manor undetected. He darted through corridors until he reached the main hall. There in plain sight stood the lyre in all of its splendor, glinting in the moonlight. All he had to do was reach out and take it. The second he touched the mysterious lyre, Volpan felt an ancient power flowing through him. Reality fractured and exploded into an infinite number of worlds, all identical and yet somehow distinct. Beyond the webs of fate, he witnessed all possible futures resonating, vibrating, clashing. Then he saw and he knew. He, his loved ones, his city, his kingdom, his world, everything was going to disappear swallowed up by a cataclysm whose origin lurked behind the veil of possibilities. The second he touched the relic, the sheer power of the visions caused poor Volpon to collapse on the spot. Leo took his unconscious friend on his back and fled the mansion, an army of guards at his heels. Hang in there, old friend. We'll get through this. Ah. I'll deal with the guards and get you to a safe place. Volpon! Volpon! You completed this mission with a few with a few victims in your graveyard deck. For now, it won't change anything, but be aware that if you leave a trail of bodies behind you, you may have to face the consequences Impressive later. As always, old boy. So that's good to know. So me and my ridiculous food farming thing actually was very worth it. Uh, but even then, I think we are going to have to kill some folks just because. Volpon awoke in the forest of Reconcere. His head throbbing. The liar was on the ground beside him, but Leo was nowhere to be found. Uh, Leo! 
Leo! Where is he? What happened? At that moment, he remembered the visions. It can't be! Before he had time to think, Volpon was struck with a vision of his friend in prison. A wave of despair swept over him. Leo, why are they taking him? Why are they going to execute him? Oh, gods, please, no! This is a Doom event card. It symbolizes tragic events that only Volpon can see, and that will lead, lead the world to its end. The number above the Doom event indicates how many turns you have left to prevent these events from taking place by changing the course of the tale. Each mission you complete costs a turn, but don't worry, if you fail to complete a mission, you can always retry with no time penalty. I need to help him before it's too late. I must have him locked up in the Eisenberg prison. This is a mission card. By selecting it, you'll be able to see its objectives and be able to start it. The choice of which missions you complete and in what order is crucial to preventing doom events from occurring. Missions also contain secret side objectives and choices to make that will change the way the next ones unfold. All leading up, all leading to different results. It's up to you to experiment and make the right choices. To fight fate. I'm coming, Leo. Wait, what the? Oh no. Volpon was struck with another flash. The smell of blood, the clash of metal, the roar of a battle, a vision of a massacre yet to come. The miners strike! Father! The militia are planning an attack on the blockade, and Lady Cattell must be behind this. I have to warn them. They'll all be slaughtered. If I'm going to warn the miners, I need to find their leader, Karst. They won't budge an inch without his say so. Ah, uh, uh, what have I done? It's this damn instrument. Volpon looked at the strange liar with disgust. Wish I'd never touched the blasted thing. Maybe if I give it back to Lady Cattell, that might smooth things over. After all, a fault confessed is half redressed. I read a letter of apology and present it to the Council of Mothers. They might be able to put pressure on Cattell and prevent her from ordering the massacre. Volpan looked at the liar once more before packing it into a satchel. Slowly, painfully, he dragged himself to his feet. All right, Volpan, you can fix this. He took a look around in order, or in an effort to get his bearings. To his left, he saw the fumes of the city rising above the trees. To his right, the silhouette of the ferocious, uh, ferrous mount shrouded in acrid smoke from the mines. Better get moving. Your adventures begin now. Make your own choices and discover their consequences. Welcome to Four Tales. As in foretell. Oh! Select the mission your adventurers will tackle. So we can do a lot of these. The prisoner, the transfer, the strike leader, the negotiator, the onslaught. So some of these don't have a time limit. I'm assuming the prisoner might resolve the transfer. And this one might resolve this one. But I might be able to dive in. If I click on this, ah, no, 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 no. So these are the missions, these are the Doom cards, got it. Leo was scheduled to transfer along with some other prisoners. It's not clear where they're headed or why, but whatever the reason, it can't be good. Volpon's father and the miners are barricaded inside the mine. Soon, on Lady Cattell's order, armed guards will attack and slaughter the workers. There must be a way to prevent this by diplomacy or force. The miners are in danger, and not just from the local militia. They won't budge without word from their leader, Karst. Time to pay him a visit. So, let's do the prisoner first. The theft of the relic didn't go as planned. Leo's in jail, and Lady Cattell's out for revenge. Wolfbond needs to break his friend out fast. Interesting. I can choose companions, but I currently can't. So, if I hit start, does it actually start a mission? What? How long is this demo? It might actually be huge. Holy shit. The City Watch is holding Leo in the local jail. Volpon needs a way to uh, to find a way to rescue him. Uh, find a way inside to rescue him. Time for a prison break. So one of the things to note is all of my resources are reset, which is a little bit of a shame. I wish the fame would carry over. There. there has to be a way in. I have a friend in there. I was hoping I'd pay him a visit. Visit? What do you think this is? A bloody retirement home? Perhaps we could come to some sort of arrangement. Perhaps have you arranged for me to get five gold? I'll forget I ever saw you. Gold. Where am I ever going to get that from? All right. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame that we don't get to keep our resources. But I understand why, at the very least. Okay, one way or another, this is a fantastic game. I can't wait to play more of it. And I'm honestly shocked that the demo keeps going. I was assuming that the demo was going to be, you know, just the first mission. But it keeps going and going. That's really cool. This reminds me of Omen Sight, but instead of being a hack and slash action RPG, uh, Omen Sight and Story's Path of Destinies, uh, instead of being action RPGs, it's a narrative deck builder. Uh, now, I know the developers kind of uh, had memed about it a little bit, saying, you know, it's not a roguelike, it's a narrative, uh, you know, deck builder or something to that extent. 
And so each of these missions does have kind of win-lose conditions that you might want to keep in mind. Uh, and so I think there's kind of a little bit of roguelite in the DLC, or D DLC, roguelike in the DNA, but for the most part, it is a linear adventure that you can just play through multiple times with potentially different results. So I guess it's a little bit more of choose your own adventure, which I kind of like. I, I like where it's going. I like the resource setup. I like how every card has different interactions with things, consequences, and so on and so forth. I think it's handled really well. The music is great. I love the ambiance. I love the card art. It's incredibly well made. I, lo I love the look of Drifting Lands, but this is by and far a better product, and I'm super excited to see where it goes from here. But uh, for now, I think this is a good stopping point at the very least. I don't really want to play more, uh, despite the fact that I apparently can and potentially can even resolve the Miner Strike or something to that extent. Um, but if you guys want to play the Four Tales demo yourselves, uh, just check out the uh, link in the description below. It's a ton of fun. I highly recommend it. This quickly is going to be one of my my like top upcoming games to try out and uh, you know see where it goes when it actually comes out. And hopefully it'll be out summer 2022, so it might actually be out in a couple of weeks. We'll see. Uh, so we might not actually have to wait for very long. But for now, if you guys like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like helps more than you know. Yeah, then you know. And uh, if you want to see more, hit subscribe because I've got tons of rad new indie games to check out every single day. And I wouldn't mind playing more of this here and there or something. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.